Hey everyone, Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist and back pain specialist. In today's video, I want to cover a question that I get almost every day, which is this a question of uh, can a herniated disc heal? So uh, people all over town are being diagnosed with disc herniations and led to believe that they need pills, injections, or surgery. But the truth is uh, that a lot of times these things can heal uh, naturally on their own. In fact, up to 95% uh, of more cases uh, of these disc problems actually don't need uh, any form of uh, you know advanced uh, intervention, pills, injections, or surgery, and through natural treatment we can get relief. So the short answer is yes. Uh, what we know is that uh, three to six months after a disc herniation, we have actual uh, imaging evidence. So we take an image and somebody has a, a disc bulge, something like that, and then six months later, uh, we look at that same image and through um, natural conservative treatment such as physical therapy, uh, we see that the disc will actually um, you know, reabsorb. Uh, and if you think about it, it's just like anything else, like a paper cut, right? So it's a combination of both uh, treatment, exercise, movement, and education uh, combined with obviously time, right? But within three to six months, we'll see that these discs can actually uh, heal on their own. So, uh, you know, for anybody out there who's watching, I help people get back to normal without uh, invasive measures, especially uh, surgery. So uh, call 484-552-3767 uh, if anybody out there is dealing with back troubles and needs help, uh, needs help and wants to avoid those things. So, um, you know, with that being said, again, discs can heal, but what differentiates those people that heal versus don't heal? So uh, back problems are scary to a lot of people because they're, they can't be seen, right? They're like, uh, paper cuts on the inside of the body, if you will, right? So something, whether it was you bent, lifted, twisted, uh, you know, went for a long car ride, whatever, something nicked the scab, uh, made the tissue sensitive, uh, and then as a result, we feel back discomfort, right? And that goes on and on. And for some people, three to six months, it will heal. Uh, and then other people, it won't. So um, just get that the short answer is yes, it can heal, but for, for uh, many folks out there, uh, it doesn't go away. And they continue to believe that the disc is the cause of the problem, which it absolutely can be, but get that there are other factors involved. So I want to talk about um, what can keep back pain uh, going on and, and uh, continuing to bother people uh, as they go throughout their life beyond this normal healing time, right? So uh, let me just kind of use this as an example. Um, so let's just say this is time. Uh, and this is pain, there's a pain threshold that everybody has in their life. Uh, it could be high or low or whatever, um, but get their uh, 45 miles of nerves, 400 miles, or 400 nerves, 45 miles of nerves just buzzing along at any given point in your life waiting for you to do something to them um, and to sort of set the alarm system off. So think of pain and this kind of concept as your alarm system. So what we know is that let's just say, um, I use the paper cut analogy, so we use that. Let's just say you're going along one day and give yourself a paper cut. Well, what happens? You say, ouch, right? Ouch, Charlie, that really hurts. You shake it out, you, you suck on it for a minute or whatever, and then, you know, in a couple hours, uh, you know, a couple minutes, a couple hours, I don't know, let's just say it's super bad, it's a metal, a metal cut, um, <laughs> whatever, cardboard cut. Uh, maybe it takes a couple days, right? And then things simmer down and you go back uh, into your life and it's healed. And you know what's nice about something external is you can actually see it. So you can see that it heals and you can see that if you kind of bend your finger this way it cracks it open and whatnot and you know not to do that. So um, that's that's the normal healing process for something like a paper cut, right? Um, short, there it is and there it goes. Now would it be weird um, for anybody watching, right, uh, who's had back pain for more than three to six months, um, would it be weird if that back pain lasted for two years or three years? So for anybody watching, how long have you had back discomfort for? Five years, 10 years? I've seen some people like 20, 30 years, right? So that just doesn't make sense. So would it be weird if you had a paper cut uh, that lasted uh, and hurt for 10 years? Well, yeah, you'd be like, what the heck's going on? Like, something's wrong with me. Um, something surely has gone uh, gone south, right? Something's not right about this. So I'm not healing, or I've got some flesh-eating disease or bacteria, or something's just really uh, wrong with my body and my ability to heal. There's some disease or something going on. You know, you'd be very concerned at that point. So I would say, well, what makes back uh, problems, disc problems, any different, right? So if you get about it, there are um, tissues in the body. This is time, right? Uh, and this is, you know, healing time, if you will, and this is the type of uh, kind of body part. So we know tendons, right, can take a while. 
they take X amount of time, um, you know, three, six months, depending, but it could take longer in some cases. Bone, take eight to 12 weeks, right? So up to two months there. Uh, you know, disc problems, three to six months, and so on and so forth. So get that uh, paper cuts, right, a day. <laughs> so just get that there are certain things within the body that naturally they all, notice they all have an ending point, right? But they will naturally heal. So the same thing happens uh, in the back. Uh, but why does, it, why does it keep going on? What's happening there? So um, yeah, it's really funky if, if somebody's having back pain for that long. And part of it could be this. Part of it could be um, that people keep just nicking the scab. So, right, if you had a paper cut and it lasted for 10 years, normally that would be weird. But it might not be weird if every time it started to heal, you just kind of, you were cracking, right? You were like, bleed, bleed, bleed. You were just reopening the wound, right? Well, uh, you know, that would be like, well, duh, of course it's not going to heal. But the difference is that you can physically see that, right? People with back issues, they have certain things that are aggravating their lower back, causing them to sort of nick the scab or annoy or, or set off the alarm system uh, in their spine, and they just don't know it. Why? Because it's kind of mysterious. They've been told they have all these things wrong. They don't really know what it is, nor does it really matter, by the way. Um, but, you know, it can get really involved, and it can seem sort of uh, hard to get a, a grip on versus something like a paper cut or, you know, a... Uh, cut on your leg or knee, if you scraped your knee, you can see it. You can see that it's healing or not healing. You know what hurts it, you know what doesn't, right? So that's just it. So it could absolutely be that, hey, there's, um, again, we've got this thing going, right? There's this thing that um, keeps, you know, this tissue problem. Tissue is just, you know, something in the body, such as a nerve, a bone, or whatever, really just the body, right? Um, and there's different types of tissue in the body. It could just be an issue with the tissue where, like I said, you're nicking something or annoying something in the back, right? That every time it starts to feel better, it's like, ah, I lifted something. I've been a certain way. I went driving. I, you know, was playing golf, whatever. Um, and it continues to keep the alarm system, um, you know, going off and playing that same tune over and over again. By the way, the longer you hear that tune, the harder it gets to calm it down. So it could just be an issue in the tissue, right? So the first step, um, and something I want to talk about today really quickly here, is, is you've got to start to understand what makes things with the back better and what makes things with the back worse. So really it's like take a piece of paper, fold it hot dog style. I can't stress this enough. People want to overlook this and just ask me like what exercise to do to heal their back problem. And that's like another component of it, absolutely. But without this, without cleaning up and optimizing the healing environment, uh, the chances of healing are really sour. So uh, on one side, draw like a frown face. On the other side, draw a smiley face and do the best you can with this, right? So um, on one side, you're going to write all the things that make uh, the issue worse and all the things that make it feel better. So what we often notice is that people, right, have a lot of things over here, sitting, driving, bending, lifting, twisting, golfing, sleeping, right? And then they might say, well, I feel better if I lay down. And as you can imagine, right, this guy on this side of the equation, he's, he's really fat <laughs> and he needs to be put on a diet. And this person over here, they're starving. They've barely got anything uh, to feed themselves with, right? You can imagine that if you just go, you go to the, the chiropractor, you go to the PT, you do an exercise once a day, you go to the massage therapist, that stuff does not work generally long term because it doesn't change the environment of healing, right? So something got these folks in trouble who have these disc problems generally. So something has to get them out. And what usually got them in trouble is their environment or the way that they were doing specific things, movements, activities, uh, daily stresses throughout the day. Um, so get that this is a big part of the equation. And one take home is that we really have to hammer this down because then what we have to do is we have to put this guy on a diet. We have to slim him down, shrink him, right? And then what we need to do is by temp and we do that by temporarily modifying or tweaking these activities, right? And then that starts to balance things a little bit better. And then we can go ahead and we can give specific movement strategies to fatten this guy up over here um, by trying to find a specific movement that feels better for that person with a quote unquote disc problem um, and, and just do that repeatedly. Take it as a pill uh, consistently throughout the day. That's how we tip the scale towards healing, right? So that's sort of 
uh, you know, the concept, if we will, of thinking, um, you know, why do some disc problems just get better? Well, sometimes they just do, and naturally we know that they should because everything else heals in your body. Why wouldn't a disc, for example? Um, but a lot of times the back is sort of mysterious in that you can't see it, uh, and it's hard to kind of tell what brought it on, right? So you really need to meet with a coach um, to try to figure this and solve this, uh, this problem in this equation, if you will. So that being said, that's one piece of it, but just get to, and I won't go too much into it, that you know, um, there are many people who have herniated discs and feel no pain. Some stats show up to 65, 70% in people who are over the age of 50. So they're actually very common things uh, that just occur and are part of normal aging, but don't actually have to uh, and aren't correlated to pain. It's just like wrinkles on the skin, right? So um, if, if that's possible and people can have all these problems and feel no pain, uh, then and these problems don't necessarily cause pain, then like how can I be sure that my image and the disc problem that they showed is actually the cause of my problem? Well, oftentimes you can't, and it really doesn't matter. So uh, the point is, is that get that there are um, many other variables involved if we consider that pain is really an output uh, and an experience from the brain to protect ourselves from some perceived, that's a key word, perceived threat, right? So it's a protective mechanism, an alarm system, if you will, to say, hey, something's not going on here. But like, if you walk in your house every day and you hear the same song uh, at the same time uh, and it's playing the same tune over and over again, and then one day you don't hear it, well, that's, that's gonna be weird, right? You're gonna be like, something's wrong. So that often happens, happens with people with back problems is that they go, they, they've been feeling the same thing over and over again, and even though their tissue is healed, they've trained their brain so much, right? We actually see brain changes. They've trained their brain so much to kind of feel, feel uh, a little tweak here, a little tweak there, some leg stuff, right? Um, and yeah, they just, they've gotten so used to it when they don't feel it, they're almost questioning whether or not they should be feeling it, right? So you can imagine the longer you hear that same song, it gets tough to shut off. So there are other things that contribute. I'll review them really quickly here. Um, but uh, yeah, my wife and I was probably like, I don't know, in the last year or something like that, uh, she always grew up sleeping with a fan. So she has the fan on when we go to bed. So uh, I, I'll never forget it. We, we woke up one night because there was no fan running. So what happened is the electricity went out in the middle of the night and I had never slept with a fan growing up, but I've been with her since I've been 16. So, you know, so a long time with fan now. Um, and the one night when the electricity went out and the, and the fan shut off, it was like, I remember waking up and looking at her and being like, like, are you awake? <laughs> like whispering to her, right? And it was just like so dead quiet that even though I'd grown up with that, I'd gotten so used to hearing it and we had gotten so used to hearing that as soon as it wasn't there, it was like something was wrong. It was like really awkward and weird, right? Same thing can happen with pain. So that's just a different analogy there. Uh, maybe that makes you laugh or think of it differently, but that's what can happen. So get that. Right, there are many things. Yes, there are things that could be annoying the tissue that we have to figure out what to do, uh, how to how to do less with that which makes uh, somebody feel worse, and more of that which makes them feel better. But there's also other things. Like I said, I mean, most people with these issues, they go to the primary care physician. Um, they go uh, from the primary care physician to the surgeon. Uh, the surgeon, uh, you know, the primary care physician says you have a bad back. Right, the surgeon says you're broken and you need fixing. Uh, you know, they tell you you might need injections or surgery uh, because they gave you an MRI and it says things don't look good. And then on your way home, your, your hubby or whoever calls you and says, hey, how'd your appointment go? And you say, well, I'd say it was pretty good. Um, you know, I've got the back of an 80 year old and I've got spinal stenosis and some big bulging discs back there, right? Like not, it doesn't happen. Uh, and then from there, right, they said, hey, don't pick anything up because you could hurt yourself. So then you're like, okay, well, how the heck do I do anything in life? So then you start to box yourself in. Uh, and then from there, your grandkids want to play and you're like, well, I can't really do that because I'm not supposed to be picking them up and running around because I can hurt myself. So then you're just going more down the tubes. Then you don't sleep well. You've got cortisol, which is released, which is a stress hormone, right? So then you're stressed out and so on and so forth. And as you can imagine, right, with a paper cut, this doesn't happen. It almost never would, right? It's just like, boom, I nick some tissue and it just scabs up and the process is stopped here. With back problems, there's a huge unnecessary buildup 
right? And this whole time you're playing the same tune over and over again. And now for you know six weeks before you see a therapist, you've been playing the same song. You're getting, you're starting to get used to it, right? The 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 problem is going from something that just started off as a simple tweak in the back, right? Uh, and now it's become a huge experience, right? So um, the analogy I use is. Um, we all have things in our lives that we can remember very clearly, and it's because there was an experience created around it. If I was to say to anybody watching, when was the last time you gave yourself a paper cut? The only way you would ever remember, probably, unless it was like super traumatic, and that's the point, right, um, is, is if you did it like a minute ago, or like an hour, or maybe like in the past week. But other than that, right, we forget about it because there's no experience behind it. Um, it's just there and gone. Back problems are different. They change people's lives. Then we're stressed out because, oh, we can't go to work. Biggest predictor of, uh, or the biggest um, cause of disability in the world. Uh, causes uh, lost work time other than just the common cold is back problems. So then we're on disability and so on and so forth and cause just the cycle repeat itself. So um, get that an experience. This is such an experience. This is like, um, you know, the, uh, the if, there were, if you were on the boardwalk, right, in Ocean City, New Jersey, or wherever, and there was a pink elephant with a tutu um, that had an ice cream cone smashed on his head and it was wearing flippers, right? You would like never forget that because it would be an experience. You'd be telling everybody, you'd be taking pictures, you'd probably be uploading them on Facebook, um, it would be on YouTube, uh, you know, you guys would be telling stories later on that night about what you saw and so on and so forth. That experience would, uh, it would be amplified. The volume on it would be turned up such that you wouldn't be able to forget it. So that's that, that's sort of like what pain can be like. Um, so hopefully this is helpful. This all started, uh, it became a rant, but it all started with the question of can a herniated disc heal? And we know absolutely that um, all other factors controlled, just the disc itself, just like anything else in life, a paper cut, a tendon problem, a broken bone, everything heals. But, but and, and so do back problems. Within three to six months, we know that time, along with conservative treatment, the majority, over 90% of disc problems will heal on their own um, because what we see is that uh, the body can sort of reabsorb the disc material and patch it up um, just like other things and scars form on other parts of the body but get that there are a subset of people with back problems that continue to have persistent pain and part of the main reason is that pain is an experience or an output from the brain um, that is used to protect us from some perceived threat or danger back problem can seem very threatening as compared to a paper cut and is more of an experience and more involved with all kinds of mass confusion as compared to something simple maybe like a paper cut so this is the problem we hear the same tune over and over again and be and before we know we're stuck in a cycle of chronic pain which actually changes the way that um, we think and we kind of relate to our back and you know just changes our life so this is how it can continue even beyond when the back is healed so the back is likely healed here unless there are things that are nicking the scab right and that's the point of trying to find out what makes somebody feel better and feel worse that's the big thing uh, we need to figure out first and then get that we can't ignore all these other things that people have been told uh, all the other uh, you know uh, things within the environment that might contribute to this so really it's a big picture approach to get people on the path to healing from disc problems arthritis problems uh, just back problems in general it's a ma major problem in this country um, and through a specific coaching, right, we can sit down, look at the big picture, and try to figure out the best way to sort of tackle them systematically so we don't add more confusion to the mix. So, again, Dr. Charlie Johnson, 484-552-3767 uh, for anybody out there who's looking for natural relief. Uh, if you found this valuable, like, share, comment. Um, appreciate all the feedback. Thanks, everyone.